let's go. Hello. I'm broken. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hey, and welcome to the another popcorn club. This week we went to go and see Night Moves. It's not that film. Did you go and see a different film? No, it's nothing to do with that. Night Moves is about a trio of eco terrorists played by my Jess... favourite kind. Really? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't really like terror. Three eco terrorists played by Jesse Eisenberg, Dakota Fanning, and Peter Sarsgaard, as they kind of team up, plan execute and then deal with the aftermath of the bombing of a dam. I didn't know anything about the plot or what it was going to be like. I just kind of knew who was going to be in it. I was quite intrigued, I think, and pulled in um, early on in terms of once you kind of figure out that that's, you know, these people, they know each other because they're all interested in eco yeah, And it takes its time setting up the people yeah. in the place. And, and then you, you figure to... out what they're actually yeah. trying to do. Um, and that was all quite interesting and suspenseful. But then I feel like it lost its way a little bit. I think I've, my main criticism of the film is that it just... I didn't really... At the end of it, I was like, I don't really know what point she was trying to make. It just didn't seem to have a very clear message um, and that's not always a bad thing, but mm. I just felt like it meandered along a windy road and never really got to a destination. That's what she does as a director. I, I don't know any of her other No, films, I mean, I'm, so. well, her last film, Meek's Cut Off, I tried to actually sit down and watch and I got about 15 minutes in and like I gave up on that. Oh. And I think this is... This is, well, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, this is her most accessible film that she's made to date. Oh, so she's and one of those people that does like weird films. A little bit. Well, not necessarily but weird, I mean. but I think films that weird for the sake of being weird. Not even necessarily the weird for the sake of, of not necessarily weird for the sake of being weird, but not just not necessarily <laughs> traditionally narratively structured. Okay. But this one does have a very clear structure in terms of what's going on. The planning takes up the first half of the film, the kind of the actual, the bombing of the dam takes place pretty much right in the middle. And then the second half of the film is kind of about how they deal the with the consequences yeah. of, of what they've done. And so for, from that sense, it's actually quite easy to follow. And I think, yeah, especially the first half of the film, you don't know quite where it's going to get there as you're sort of introducing learning about all these people. I think it's very effective intriguing thriller yeah the first the first half of the film was a bit that i really enjoyed building up to the actual bombing of the dam there's lots of points along the journey for them to get to that moment where they put the bomb the bomb in the boat the part of the boat there's lots of moments that really build suspense really very well um and i think she does a good job of creating that tension like she's mm. not afraid of holding a moment so that you're just kind of like, oh, is it going to work or not? After that kind of really strong first half, mm -hmm. it then goes into a bit of a kind of who, uh, them all turning on each other and blaming each other when they realise that maybe the results of the, the dam explosion weren't really, didn't drive the results that they actually mm. wanted and they all kind of deal with it in different ways, but they, the sort of finger pointing and how they're going to do it. And I, I just really, basically, I couldn't sympathise with any of their reactions to it. I didn't really know, you know, I don't think necessarily really you're supposed to, for. in a way. I think that's yeah. kind of the message of the film, I think, and it's kind of dealing with this idea of what happens to sort of these young idealistic people when they're confronted with the consequences of sort of direct action, in a way, and whether it's questioning whether it's really the right sort of course the take I just really, the sort of person who would maybe do such a thing. I just really struggled not having someone that I was like, I can see where they're coming from because I couldn't see where anyone was coming from. <laughs> Peter Sarsgaard was just, his character was just <laughs> like really creepy and skeevy and just like wanted to but, get out but, of town. But not the creepiest of the three. No. Um, Dakota Fanning like completely flip-flopped after the event um, and freaked out and was like, Oh my god! I can't believe it's She's like a accidentally and killed. Thing, I can't she? believe us exploding this massive dam accidentally killed someone. And I was kind of a bit like, did you not think about that beforehand? Of course, that was always going to be a risk. So yeah. I just was a bit lost patience with her. And then Jesse Eisenberg, um, his character just goes mental at the thought that Dakota Fanning might 
talk and like basically kills her at the end. And I just couldn't understand that either because I didn't see that coming from his character earlier in the film. It just felt, it just didn't feel like that would be a reaction that any normal person would have. The way he's presented <laughs> in the film, he's incredibly dark and moody and kind of... But not the, like, the, 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 I didn't ever I get that vibe get it, he's get, He gets increasingly sinister and you don't, he kind of hardly ever says anything. And it's really hard to sort of get a handle on exactly who and what he is and how far he'll go. And I think, I mean, the same way that the first half of the film is they're building up to the blowing up of the dam, you're kind of invested in the actions involved. I think as the film goes on, the mystery switches from will they, won't they actually succeed in that task about the dam to exactly what and how far will Jesse Eisenberg go. And I just didn't buy that he'd go that far. For someone whose character supposedly cares about the earth and cares about the environment and, you know, he works on these, like... Um, community um, settlement farm lives places in lives in a yurt um, like grows vegetables to help sell and there's this real community like likes working in these community type spaces like I just didn't buy that he would kill a human being and also I'm just kind of over the whole Jesse Eisenberg playing creepy um, verbose sinister idiots he does it well um, and he's done it very well in some other films that I really liked, but he just seems to be very typecast at the moment, and I'm just a bit kind of like, does anyone else feel like that? Well, I think... Like, I think the I'm just one a bit, bit like, oh, Jesse Eisenberg in another creepy villain. <laughs> oh, great. But I think the one bit I disagree with there is he's not playing stupid people, he's playing almost hyper-intelligent people. Yeah, the sorry, so. this idiot wasn't the right mm. choice of phrase, it's just my frustration. <laughs> Ultimately, for me, in terms of popcorns, I'm not entirely sure, even now, quite where this film sits overall it being a film of two very different halves and one that's not quite as successful as the other um i think overall if i had to mark it it would probably be something along the lines of six and a half seven six and a half seven somewhere in there i'm gonna go with six because i um as much as i was enjoying the first half i just it really lost me in the second half to be honest um i just didn't know who to care about and ended up not caring about any of it. So, and that was a shame because it started quite strongly. So, have you seen Night Moves? Um, how do you feel about Jesse Eisenberg and um, his face? <laughs> Let us know in the comment below. Wow. Um, next week, we're off to see um, We Came Together, which I'm excited about because I like funny like and subscribe if you want to make sure you get that in your little youtube inbox all filed nicely for you waiting for you when it's ready um and you can also follow us on facebook and twitter if you're really into that sort of thing and all those links in the description box below and we will see you next time bye i don't know these are my night moves maybe they did that at any point during the film no they didn't i just what did they do in the film um <laughs>